Hi, I'm Pam. I'm one of the children's librarians here at the Billie Jean King Main Library, and I'm here to tell you the story of the five little snowmen. But before we do that, I would like to show you the science for snowmen. So first you get your fingers fluttering like snow falling to the ground. Then you take your thumb, put it right in the middle of your forehead, and just swipe it around. That's the sign for man. So we're going to do snow man. All right, you've got it. So let's get to our story. There there were five little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. I called Frosty. And Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. Well, there were four little snowmen riding on the sled and another fell off and bumped his head. I called Frosty and Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. But they didn't listen. There were three little snowmen riding on the sled. One fell off and bumped his head. I called Frosty again. Guess what he said? No more snowmen riding on the sled. But the two that were left didn't listen. And another fell off and bumped his head. Frosty said again, no more snowmen riding on the sled. There was one little snowman left. He certainly didn't listen. He fell off and bumped his head. Frosty said, no more snowmen riding on the sled. But then Frosty whispered to me and I nodded my head and the next time the five little snowmen went out on riding on that sled. They all wore helmets. And that is the story of the five little snowmen. Twain Branch, and today we're going to be reading Polar Bear's Underwear by Tupra Tupra. Poor Polar Bear, he can't find his underwear. What's the matter? asked his friend Mouse. I've lost my underwear. Well, what kind of underwear were you wearing today, Polar Bear? I can't remember. Don't worry, Polar Bear. We'll look for it together. Thank you, Mouse. Look at this colorful striped underwear. Is this your pair, Polar Bear? No, that's not my underwear. Well, then whose underwear is it? It's Zebra's underwear, and it's his favorite pair too. This pair has treats all over it. Look at these yummy treats. Is this your pair, Polar Bear? No, it's not mine, Mouse. Well, whose underwear is it? Nom, nom, nom. It's Pig's underwear. Those treats look delicious. Here's an itty bitty pair. These look too small to be your underwear, Polar Bear. I agree. But whose underwear is it? It's Butterfly's underwear. This underwear says, I love mice. This must be your pair, pair, polar bear. No, it's not my underwear at all. Well, whose underwear is it? Oh no, it's Cat's underwear. Run! Wow, polka dot underwear with ruffles. Is this your pair? Uh, this isn't it. Let's have a look. Wiggle, wiggle. It's Squid's underwear. And he has ten legs. Let's count his legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten legs. This pair of underwear is upside down. 
Is this your pair, polar bear? No way! But whose underwear is it? It's Bunny's underwear, and it looks great on her head. Hmm, I see some white underwear. Could those pair be it? Let's have a closer look. Polar bear, you're wearing your underwear. Your pair was never lost at all. Oh, I forgot that I put on my new white underwear today. I had no idea that I was wearing my underwear all along, mouse. I'm glad that you helped me find my pair, polar bear. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Long Beach Public Library. Today I'll be doing a penguin rhyme with you. But before we start, I'm going to have you do some movements. We're going to do this um, as while well I do the rhyme. So can everybody roll their arms? All right. And can you stretch out your arms really wide? Good job. And can you make your hand fly over and slap your other hand? Good job. That's going to be a splat. So we're going to start. And we're gonna count our penguins first. We have one, two, three, four penguins. Okay, let's start. Four little penguins standing in a row. Rolling down the mountain came a big ball of snow. It flew through the air and landed with a splat. And all you could see was one, what is that? Purple hat. Okay, let's count down our penguins. One, two, three. Okay, three little penguins standing in a row. Rolling down the mountain came a big ball of snow. It flew through the air and landed with a splat. And all you could see was one yellow hat. Okay, let's count our penguins. We have one, two penguins left. Okay, two little penguins standing in a row. Rolling down the mountain came a big ball of snow. It flew through the air and landed with a splat. And all you could see was one red hat. How many penguins do I have left? I see one. Okay. One little penguin standing by himself. Rolling down the mountain came a big ball of snow. It flew through the air and landed with a splat. And all you could see was one blue hat. Good job. Okay, I'll be seeing you guys. Take care. My name is Caitlin and I'm at the BJK Main Library in downtown Long Beach and I will be reading Snowman at Night by Carolyn Buhner. One wintry day I made a snowman, very round and tall. The next day when I saw him, he was not the same at all. His hat had slipped, his arms drooped down. He really looked a fright. It made me start to wonder, what do snowmen do at night? I think that snowmen start to slide when it gets really dark. Off the lawn and down the street, right into the park. They gather in a circle while they wait for all the others sipping cups of ice-cold cocoa made by snowman mothers. Then the snowman games begin. They line up in their places. 
each one anxious for his turn in the snowman races. After everyone has had a chance at racing once or twice, they go on over to the pond to do skating tricks on ice. Sometimes they start giggling and then they act like clowns. They bump into each other till they all fall down. They gather up their snowballs, the pitcher takes his aim, and underneath the moonlit sky, they play a baseball game. No one knows just how it started, but soon it's quite a sight with snowmen throwing snowballs in the world's best snowball fight. Then it's time for sledding. It's a wild ride down the hill. Wahoo, they yell. This is by far the snowman's biggest thrill. Finally, they're tuckered out and getting sleepy. So they slowly gather up their things and one by one they go. So if your snowman's grin is crooked or he's lost a little height, you'll know he's just been doing what snowmen do at night. And that's the end. Thanks for being with me this morning, friends. Hello, everyone. My name is Coral. I'm from the Michelle Obama Neighborhood Library branch. Uh, today, I will be doing a snowflake rhyme. Feel free to follow along. It goes like this. One, two, three. Snowflakes, snowflakes on the trees. Snowflakes, snowflakes dancing with me. First on my head, then on my toes. Now on my nose where the cold breeze blows. Snowflakes, snowflakes falling down. Falling gently on the ground. Snowflakes, snowflakes make no sound. One by one they make a mount. So grab your skis and grab your sled. Climb up, up high and wee they said. Thank you for sticking around. Make sure to visit your local library to check out the next story times. Until next time. Hi boys and girls, my name is Mr. Eric and I am a librarian for the Los Altos neighborhood branch for the Long Beach library system. And since it's such a beautiful snowy day out here, look at all these snowflakes, so beautiful, I thought I'd read a book called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Katz. So get comfortable, get warm, get your coats, get your little beanie, your little gloves on and enjoy the story, The Snowy Day, published by the Viking Press, New York. All right, there's our friend. Let's see what his name is. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. Look at all of that beautiful snow outside. Makes you want to play out there. After breakfast, he put on a snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Can you guys imagine so much snow that it's hard to see paths? They have to scoop it out of the way so you can walk. Wow, that's a lot of snow. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. And he walked with his toes pointing in like that. Now, if you look closely, you can see here that his toes are facing away from one another. On this page, he brings them in and now his toes are facing each other. See the difference? He's having some fun in the snow. 
Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks, and he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. See all these straight lines here? I wonder what that could be that it's making these tracks. Let's find out. It was a stick. He must have been dragging the stick the whole way with him. Wow, and look at those trees covered in snow. A stick that was just right for smacking the snow-covered tree. Now let's pretend like we're shaking the tree. We're gonna help Peter shake it so we can get some of that snow off. Shake, 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 shake. There we go. Now let's find out where it goes. Down fell the snow boop, on top of Peter's head. Can we touch our little heads like this? Oh my goodness. And there he goes, and you see his little tracks again in the snow. But where is he going now? He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. There they go. They're throwing all kinds of snowballs. So he made a smiling snowman. There he is. And he made angels. One angel, two angel. There's Peter making his second angel. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. Woo! There he goes. Looks like fun. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. So snow and warm house, I don't know if those two could mix, but let's find out what happens. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. There they are. There's his mom. There's Peter. Looks like it's almost bedtime. And he thought and he thought and he thought about them. So now in the bathtub, see all the bubbles? There's his little rubber ducky. He's thinking about the snow. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. Where do you think the snowball went, boys and girls? Well, I see a little wet mark here. Again, remember, he's in his warm house now. Maybe the snowball melted? While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all of the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling, just like you see here. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. And there they are, his little friend, and there's Peter in his red snowsuit. The end. Awesome, boys and girls. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that you have a winter wonderful holiday, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, guys.